morning everybody and welcome to another morning of Oliver and all morning I've been singing Oliver, Oliver, never before has a boy wanted more Oliver, Oliver, won't ask for more when he knows what's in store There's a cold dark winding stairway without any banister Which would throw him down and feed him on cockroaches served in a canister I can't help it <laughs> I can't help it. I'll be singing all day now. I'll probably sing the whole score all day. Hopefully in key though. Um, today we are going to talk about Oliver Twist. And we're not actually going to talk about Oliver Twist, but the period of time that Charles Dickens wrote the book Oliver Twist in. Because during the Victorian era, era there was a massive difference between the rich and the poor in this country, in Great Britain. And to some extent, there is a big difference between the rich and the poor in many countries around the world, including this one, not to the same extent, this one um, nowadays. So in America, you see a big difference between the rich and the poor. In African countries, in Great Britain, you see a big difference between the rich and the poor. But the problem with the time in Victorian times was a way that the poorest members of society were treated and where they were sent and what happened to them and Oliver Twist is essentially a story about this underclass who were treated badly and what Charles Dickens does really well in this novel is that he says that's not fair and that actually treating people well is important and in the end treating people well is for the best um, and you also get that in uh, the book the christmas carol which is about the inequalities in society and if you're doing gcse or you've done gcse with me or you'd like to do gcse tuition with me then get in touch um, we talk about those themes that go through literature at different periods in history um, and oliver twist this is a um, child's version of oliver twist um, a great set of books, lots of classics by Arcturus, they're called Arcturus, who introduced children to a range of classics. I'm going to read you um, this chapter, which is called The Workhouse Boy, which sums up some of the conditions that children in that time were living in. At the beginning of our story, almost 200 years ago, a young woman is lying in the street. She is very pretty, but also very poor and very sick. She's expecting a baby. No one knows her name. She's carried into a workhouse, the ugly building for poor people without a home. That night she gives birth to a baby boy and dies. Her only jewels, a ring and locket, are stolen. Poor little baby boy. His father had disappeared and now he has no mother. In other words, he is an orphan. It's not a very happy start to life. Mr Bumble, the fat, bossy man running the workhouse, names the orphans born there. He does this in alphabetical order. Since he, lay, he named the last baby Swubble, beginning with S, the next has to begin with T. So he chooses Twist, Oliver Twist. For the first nine miserable years of his life, Oliver is cared for by a matron. To be honest, she doesn't care for him at all. He sleeps in a coal cellar and she gives him just enough food to stay alive. On his ninth birthday, Oliver was returning to the workhouse. There he lived with other poor and wretched boys. Mr Bumble did not send them to school. Instead, he gave them hard, boring work to do. All day long, the boys sat taking, part, taking apart old rope. Their fingers were red and raw. If they made mistakes or didn't work hard enough, Mr Bumble beat them. At mealtimes, the boys were given a bowl of thin porridge, known as gruel. It grew thinner and thinner, hungrier and hungrier. Oliver feared that one of the bigger boys was hungry enough to eat him. They decided they must do something or starve to death. One of them would tell the cook what they all wanted. They drew lots and the boy chosen to do this was Oliver. That evening, when every bowl of gruel had been scraped empty, Oliver got up nervously to his feet. All eyes were on him. Very slowly, he walked down to where the cook stood before a huge tub of gruel. 
quietly in his most polite voice, Oliver asked, Please, sir, I want some more. The greasy cook turned pale. What? he gasped. Please, sir, repeated Oliver, I want some more. The workhouse staff couldn't believe it. Ask for more? How rude, how ungrateful! The men shouted, the women screamed, and Mr Bumble hurried into the room. More? He'd never heard anything so ridiculous in his life. The boy had to go. So that's the start of our tale of Oliver Twist. And my challenge for you children out there today, whether you are in year one or whether you are in year nine, is to find out about the workhouse. So I want you to look at what is a workhouse. I'd like you to draw me a picture of what a workhouse would look like. I would like you to find me 10 facts about them. It might be who went there, why they went there, what kind of food did they get, did they get any money, what does workhouse mean, what kind of jobs might they have had to do, did anybody get better in the workhouse, what kind of diseases might have been in the workhouse, was there anything good about the workhouse? I would like you to write me 10 facts. You can think of your own. It could be some of those, can be different ones if you like, to tell me about the workhouse with a beautiful picture to illustrate it, please. And I look forward to learning some more because I'm sure in your facts there'll be some things that I don't know anything about. Have a lovely day today, everybody. Keep safe, keep healthy, and I will see you very soon.